When setting the goal of building the most powerful rocket ever starship, Elon Musk may have predicted many challenges he would face on his journey. But I'm always curious whether just then had he ever thought about the unexpected concern that the 33 Raptors could cause during testing. Indeed, the power of the Starship rocket is no joke. Remember its first explosion's aftermath? Well, the things the monster left behind on the ground were more than just a sinkhole on the OLM. After the accident, both the FAA and SpaceX were targeted for criticism by local and environmental groups, which partly led to the delay of IFT-2. Learning from that bitter lesson, SpaceX quickly installed the water deluge system on Starship's launch pad. Fortunately, the system worked as expected, and the FAA also confirmed that no injuries or public property damage have been reported after the test. However, the impact of 33 Raptor engines remained out of the SpaceX team's control. SpaceX Stage Zero damage is more serious than you think. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of Tech Map. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. SpaceX's second launch attempt of its Starship rocket on Saturday has been commended for its improvement from the first launch, which ended with the rocket exploding after reaching 24 miles into the air. One of the most notable successes is to protect the intact launch pad against the huge thrust of 33 Raptor engines instead of repeating a rock tornado scene seven months ago. Immediately after launch, the FAA noted no damage occurred. The FWS announced, Some small pieces of debris were observed, but are easily removable. Similarly, SpaceX also confirmed, The water-cooled flame deflector and other pad upgrades performed as expected, requiring minimal post-launch work to be ready for upcoming vehicle tests and the next integrated flight test. Indeed, Less than two hours after the launch, we saw the presence of Starship's workers on the launch site to assess the state of the pad. Because the amount of debris caused by the test is not near as much as after IFT-1, the cleanup job is much simpler. The chopstick on the launch tower was rechecked to ensure its operation remained smooth, and the result was still good. The team did not detect any error on the important parts, such as the electronic engine technology at the front end of the quick disconnect arm. However, there are still some problems in parts that are heavily exposed to the rocket's thrust as listed below. The launch mount's legs could be cracked a little bit, and on top of the orbital launch mount, the booster quick disconnect was subjected to a direct engine blast. This is reflected by the scars on it. The outermost tank of the water deluge system looks pretty burnt and got damaged to some extent, which attests to the forces at play. The quick disconnect arm was misaligned caused by the shockwave during the rocket's ascent. The hydraulic piston connection point of the quick disconnect arm is where the arm attaches to the ship, and it should have two pistons on each side. One of them seemed to be missing, possibly broken off by the powerful exhaust plume of Booster 9's engines. The loss of this piston could have contributed to the misalignment of the arm. Last but not least, the rocket during its ascent created giant clouds moving at fast speeds, damaging nearby infrastructures. You can see large dents on the GSE shells on the orbital tank farm due to the shockwave generated by the B9's engine explosion. Although everything seems better than before, errors still occur. Anyway, if the launch's influence was just in Starbase's range, I'm pretty sure that it's not a big deal. However, the reality is not that simple because the consequences are far beyond what you see. In a press release after Saturday's launch, South Texas organizations said that local residents again experienced their homes shaking and debris falling on the community. Musk and his pet vanity project continue to pollute and destroy our beautiful beach, coastline, and wildlife. SpaceX 
an unnecessary private money grab that only serves the wealthy, refuses to follow safety regulations, environmental regulations, and the wishes of local communities and the original people of the land, said Christopher Basildu with South Texas Environmental Justice Network. One of the most enthusiastic organizations in this affair, Another Gulf is Possible, has invited the public to a documentary screening in Brownsville about community objection to SpaceX. On December 1st, the film will explore how Brownsville residents and the Carrizo Comacruto tribe of Texas have battled the encroachment of SpaceX on pristine lands. An event invitation says, of course, it's not the first time these local organizations have shown their determination to fight Elon Musk's company. Since SpaceX announced its intention to fly Starship from Starbase, which is perched near where the Rio Grande meets the Gulf of Mexico, opponents to the plan have vocally protested. Such mighty rockets, they say, could unleash untold havoc on the surrounding land, threatening the migratory birds, shorebirds, sea turtles, and ocelots that it sustains. Despite opposition, SpaceX was warmly welcomed by local authorities and supporters in Texas. As a result, the test operations occurred easily, including the April 20th event which caused the explosion on OLM. That's when the conflict rose to its peak. On May 1st, local and environmental groups sued the FAA, claiming that the agency broke the law when it allowed SpaceX to expand operations at its Starbase site in southern Texas without undergoing a complete environmental review. Referring to the explosion, Elon Musk ensured by both words and actions that SpaceX would implement a water-cooled steel plate, which might protect the pad and the rocket, too, from harm. But Philip Metzger, a physicist at the University of Central Florida, who used to work on launch pad technology at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, disagreed. I don't think I would have taken that risk, Metzger says, of using a plain, unprotected launch pad for such a powerful vehicle. It could have gone really badly. They could have had the vehicle destroyed on the launch pad from ejecta hitting it. The reality seems to be the opposite of his prediction as the system performed as expected in IFT2. Although declined to comment on the lawsuit, the FAA banned the vehicle from the operation, standard practice when an incident occurs, and required SpaceX to complete 63 compulsory corrective actions. Additionally, they called for consultation with the FWS to complete an environmental review, and this complied with their statement on the website. A mishap investigation is designed to further enhance public safety, they added. It will determine the root cause of the event and identify corrective actions the operator must implement to avoid a recurrence of the event. Before Starship can fly again, the FAA must be satisfied that any system, process, or procedure related to the mishap does not affect public safety, the statement continues. In response, SpaceX actively cooperated with both agencies to speed up launch licensing procedures for IFT-2. Overcoming many obstacles, Starship finally flew as desired. However, as we all know, residents maintain that the FAA and local governments have consistently catered to SpaceX and ignored their outspoken complaints. So within this difficult context, what should SpaceX do? Well, the company can learn from the careful way NASA does its environmental business and the way it's done that business for more than six decades. The Kennedy Space Center, KSE, measures 140,000 square acres, but just 5,500 of them have been developed for space operations. The rest encompasses the Merritt Island Preserve and the Canaveral National Seashore, both of which have remained untouched by generations of NASA launches. The safeguards responsible for NASA's impressive environmental record begin whenever a new rocket, whether the venerable Saturn V, the just-developed Space Launch System, SpaceX's Falcon 9, and Falcon Heavy. All new rockets which are proposed to launch from Kennedy require significant safety and environmental analysis prior to launch, says Don Dankert, KSC's Spaceport Integration Environmental Planning Lead. Years of design, development, and testing, including ground tests, simulations, and flight tests, 
occur before a rocket is certified for launch operations. The fact that the two SpaceX rockets underwent that kind of vetting suggests the company would know what a robust environmental assessment looks like. Once a rocket is built, it has to overcome still more hurdles before it is cleared to fly. A complete environmental impact analysis is conducted in accordance with the Environmental Protection Agency's National Environmental Policy Act, and depending on the scale of the project and the size of the rocket, a formal environmental impact statement must then be filed. During the analysis, there was cooperation between interested parties, including NASA, the United States Environmental Protection Agency, FAA, FWS, and so forth. Only after that environmental impact analysis is conducted does the FAA give the rocket the green light to fly. Learning from NASA is a great option, but the key still lies with SpaceX itself meaning that the company must have a more optimal and suitable approach to this sensitive issue if it wants to launch rockets at Boca Chica long term. Fortunately, through two test flights, SpaceX has learned many lessons to progress day by day. Hopefully, after a few more launches, the case will be resolved and the company can win the trust of all Texans. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.